Hey friends, have you ever heard of the easy routine? Well, if you have, or if you haven't, you're in the right spot, because we're going to talk about what that is and the common mistakes people make with that routine right here. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm a sleep consultant and the creator of the Helping Baby Sleep Method. And I like the easy routine. What does it stand for? The E stands for eat. Your baby has a full feed. The A stands for activity. You have some playtime, being upright if they have reflux. And then you have S for sleeping. And then the Y stands for you time. You can get a break because it's hard. Taking care of little people is a lot of work. And why is this symbol or this acronym important? The easy routine. What is the value to this? There's a lot of value in it. And the idea is that you are keeping feeding away from sleeping. And why is that important? Well, here's the thing. If you want to nurse your kiddo or feed your kiddo to sleep and it goes well for you, amazing. There's lots of different ways to raise your little people out there. In my experience, personally and professionally, having helped over a thousand families at this point get their little ones to sleep, what tends to happen is we feed kids to sleep and then they associate feeding with falling asleep. So as they get older and they start waking more and being more aware, we have to keep feeding them back to sleep. And for some people, it can become a practice that's unsustainable. So the easy routine aligns well with the methodology of the helping baby sleep method, which is keeping feeding away from sleeping. So they wake up, they have a feed, they eat, they have time to be burped and play, and then they go down for sleeping time. Here's where most people make the mistakes, is they think that or when they wake up that you're supposed to be feeding them. But really the easy method is all about keeping feeding away from sleeping. Because what happens if you have really short naps, 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes even, you may end up feeding your little person, newborns especially, every hour and a half to two hours. And then you get stuck in what I have termed in the Helping Baby Sleep Method book, the snacking cycle. Your little one takes these frequent short meals around the clock and you never get long stretches of sleep because they snack at the breast or the bottle. Is there anything wrong with that? Not necessarily, but if you want to have great long stretches of sleep, the idea is you want to be stacking the calories evenly throughout the daytime so you can get longer stretches of nighttime sleep. So the easy method. The purpose of it is to disassociate feeding from sleeping. That's a great premise. The challenge is a lot of people misunderstand and think that you have to feed them on every wake up. But if your nap hasn't been very long, you start to develop the snacking cycle where they take short naps, have short feeds, and you just kind of get stuck like that. The easy method does play into the helping baby sleep method. Let me go through the five pillars to great sleep with the helping baby sleep method. One is really understanding that sleep is actually a learned habit. I know, we think it should be this beautiful, natural, instinctual thing. Um, because of all those beautiful photos of newborn sleeping in flower pots from the very beginning. But think about yourself. If I said to you tonight, you can't sleep in your favorite position and I'm going to take away your pillow, you would be uncomfortable. You would toss and turn and be frustrated, but then you would learn a new way of relaxing. Sleep is a learned habit. And in our book, we talk about how you can work on very gentle newborn sleep shaping as early as five to six weeks of age to help you avoid the common parenting pitfalls that most people fall into, like I did, with feeding back to sleep or rocking back to sleep or reintroducing the pacifier multiple times. So the first pillar is really understanding sleep's a learned habit. And the second pillar is timing of feeding and sleeping. So if I'm putting my kiddo down too early or too late, that can make it harder for them to fall asleep. And you can check out our six question sleep quiz in the link below to help you get some suggestions on timing for your baby based on their month of age. Timing also refers to that feeding. You want your child to be coming to the breast or bottle to work on the third pillar, which is intentional feeding. So if they come to the breast or the bottle, they're taking full feeds. They're not just having a little snack to help them doze off because that can keep you stuck in that little snacking cycle where they're wanting to feed frequently with these small amounts. Again, anything wrong with that? Not necessarily unless you want long stretches of nighttime sleep as early as possible. The fourth pillar of the helping newborn sleep method is assisting. And so it's true. They really don't have strong self-soothing skills in this newborn less than three month old stage. So you're still going to be helping them out, but you can do that in ways that are sustainable, that you can maintain long term in the place that they're going to be sleeping long term. The fifth pillar is being a great troubleshooter. So if sleep's not going well, hmm, being coming from a place of curiosity, what is going on with this child? Why could they not make it through one 45 minute daytime sleep cycle? Hmm. What could be bugging them? 
All of those pillars are elaborated and then some to give you a step-by-step -step approach to newborn and baby's four to 24 month sleeping approaches in the Helping Baby Sleep Method, the art and science of teaching your baby to sleep. It's available on Amazon and Audible, but you can start with our simple quiz below. Thanks for being here. Never miss a baby sleep tip by clicking on the link below to subscribe.